वेलकम एवरी वन टू टू डेज क्लास मैम यू कैन शेयर द स्क्रीन नाउ हेलो यस आई एम ऑडिबल यस यस मैम या या ओके आई शेयर द स्क्रीन Ma'am, please continue the class. It's already seven ten. Okay. Others will continue to join. Yeah. Or else it will be quite late, no, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I hope I'm please clearly can. audible. And uh, yes. So uh, in the previous class, we have seen the important points in the Solanaceae family. Yeah. Is my voice breaking? Hello. Ma'am, it's not breaking. Actually, there is some. Ah uh, yes, now it is uh, uh, clear. I think. Yeah, anybody can respond. Now it is clear. Am I not audible at all? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So we have previously seen the leguminous uh, solanacea vegetables, and the, like the key points that are in solanacea vegetables. And today we are going to discuss about the leguminous vegetables, which is a very huge family, and generally people are very scared because number of crops come in. Yes, they are very simple, and we have very less points to cover actually in this. Uh, you know, might be uh, less, but. There is a lot of thing to cover in when it comes to soil and acid, but in legumes, it's there is no such issue, uh, and you have very minimal number of points to be remembered. In that, the first and the foremost important crop, uh, leguminous crop. is the garden pea the very very important crop like this is the only crop that is most important others just if you read at a glance that will be enough for you the garden pea uh, we all know that the scientific name is pisum sativum and 2n equals to 14 again i am not going to like we will 
if students want uh, students want if they want a special class on complete legumes each crop described with the breeding methods i can i actually have a ppt also if time permits we'll continue with that but for the time being uh, time being a major constraint we'll be covering the important points in the crop only in that aspect uh, the garden pea being the base temperature of pea being 4.4 degrees so what is the base temperature base temperature is certainly the temperature below which the plant cannot perform or the plant physiological and growth activities actually sees is the base temperature so we use this base temperature for calculating the growing degree days as well so uh, what is the pea base temperature that is 4.4 degrees and uh, the progenitor of garden pea being the pisum elactivus Pisum fulvum being the red yellow pea, so we generally see the green color pea. The red yellow pea is nothing but the pisum fulvum, and pisum humili is dwarf pea, whereas formosum is ornamental pea. So maximum germplasm collection of uh, the garden pea. All these points, whichever I mention, are generally from the previous question papers or frequently asked questions are the most important key factors. Like if you don't have time to read the crop, these are the points that you have to read. So uh, the, uh, nextly, maximum germplasm collection uh, of garden pea is found at Nordic Gene Bank, which is located in Sweden. So directly, they will have Nordic Gene Bank having maximum germplasm collection of uh, which of the following leguminous crop or where it is, where is this Nordic Gene Bank located, that is Sweden. And powdery mildew, we see a major problem when it comes to leguminous crops is the powdery mildew, in uh, which is controlled by uh just a second okay yeah i'll be a little louder uh okay so the maximum uh the powdery mildew being the ma uh, most destructive disease when it comes to garden pea and the powdery mildew is generally controlled by single recessive gene that is the major reason that we are not able to come up with hybrids or varieties that are resistant because they are gen generally the character is controlled by a recessive gene and what uh, it is a recessive gene so the symbol will be er1 and er2 that are written in small letters and uh, also a ca single dominant gene has been identified and that that uh, dominant gene is capital ER3. So there are one, two, three, they have named the genes to be and uh, recessive genes being so small case and the dominant gene being in uppercase. And nextly, aphila mutants that are leaflets converted into tendrils and it is a recessive mutant. So this, uh, the case goes with AFAF as the representative uh, letters. And it is very important that you just remember what alphabets are used and why aphila mutants are so important for us. So as we have, uh, I have told you that powdery mildew is one of the most devastating disease. Where does powdery mildew come? It comes on the foliage part. So so if you don't have any leaves, then there is no chance of this powdery mildew attacking the plant. So if you have this aphila mutant where the leaflets of the plant are generally in the form of tendrils, but not as leaves, you cut down the chances of powdery mildew disease. And also there are reports that these leaflet mutants are actually higher yielders than the normal plants. This is because of the various factors like uh, uh, unwanted assimilation of energy is curtailed there. So these plants are actually higher yielders also and under case of water logging also, these plants perform better because they have tendrils, they have better uh, scope of coping up the water logger conditions. So aphila mutants are very important uh, aspects that are running uh, now in garden pea and they are represented by the symbol of AFAF. So generally reading aphila mutant, leafless mutant, they are convert tendril. So why is the tendril plant so important is also you, you have to know. And acacia mutants, uh, they are tendrils converted into leaflets. So this is not so important, but these mutants have been identified. Tendrils converted into leaflets. So we have seen that aphila is more advantageous. So acacia is, uh, is not important for us, but it is a mutant we have to know. The difference in options, they may confuse with aphila and acacia. And leafless, uh, as I have already mentioned, that these plants are better tolerant to 
waterlogged conditions so multiple disease resistant varieties we we know in tomato in chili they are important but also we have the jp179 which is a multiple disease resistant variety for powdery mildew fusarium wilt rust leaf we can see that all those diseases uh, that we read are generally foliar based so in in when it comes to the leguminous crops and nextly protein content we know that legumes are the good sources of proteins so it is polygenic recessive in nature so thus it becomes very difficult for us for first point polygenic that is the character is controlled by many genes and again those genes are recessive in nature so they do not express at every generation so it becomes very difficult for the breeder to get on those genes and incorporate into a single line so uh, very uh, important because legumes are crops that are mostly a source of protein so generally protein content is polygenic recessive in nature uh, and generally powdery mildew resistance because which we have uh, seen that it is a very important foliar disease is uh, these resist like powdery mildew resistant lines are generally susceptible to rust means if you are trying for getting powdery mildew resistance then you are getting uh, a welcoming a uh, susceptibility to rust why the because of linkage between the those two genes that has resistance to powdery mildew will invite susceptibility to rust and nextly early grown peas are generally susceptible to wilt because why are why do they wilt if you are sowing it early means generally legumes are grown in the uh, second half of the year that is when the winter is uh, about generally garden pea is a cool season crop compared to other legumes so it will be uh, sown in the months of uh, winter only but if you are sowing early it means you will be sowing in the august to september where still rains are prevailing it is obvious that the wilt diseases can be cost so it is just remembering early season wilt uh, late season powdery mildew no you have to remember with the reason because if you are sowing it early it is because of the rains there are chances of wilt disease and if you are sowing it late then it is because of, uh, the major problem will be powdery mildew late means sowing in the months of end of december to starting of january and all are not uh, advisable and then you get the powdery mildew uh, so generally pea seeds can germinate at as low as 5 degree celsius so we have told that the base temperature going 4.4 which is actually very less and when the temperature is all, uh, almost 4.4 also the plant the seed or the plant has its own physiological activity running so it's it's a good job right so even at 5 degrees it will obviously not only 5 degree 4.8 also in our exam we need not be worried or i read 5 degrees so it is the base temperature you know 4.4 degrees and the optimum temperature being 22 degrees not whatever crop it is optimum temperature will always be within the range of 20 21 22 in these numbers only less than 25 degrees but for garden pea in specific if they ask it is 22 degrees uh, next is Uh, so we know that garden pea is that major crop which uh, which has prominent importance because mendel has studied the different characters uh, in garden pea the genetics has been studied in garden pea only first and those seven characters that were studied in garden pea are very important you have to remember the seven characters and now we here we have given the seven characters with the chromosome number on which that particular gene resides so the seed shape uh, in for which the characters were smooth and wrinkled which was represented even in exam they can ask you the representative symbol also which was represented by the capital r or small r and which was found on the chromosome number 7 for seed color which is yellow or green the chromosome number 1 on the same seed color you have the flower color which was purple violet white that is chromosome number 1 again and the mature pods that is smooth or wrinkled which was found on chromosome number 4 again on chromosome number 4 we have plant height in fluorescence and color of unripe pods that is green or yellow was given on chromosome number 5 so here there are basically only five uh, sorry four different uh, chromosome numbers that you have to remember that is chromosome number 1 4 5 and 7 Uh, and what are those characters i am once again repeating if it is one the seed and the flower color 
flower and seed both come from the same uh, thing right so you can remember like that next one is mature pod so after the flower seed the pod comes which is chromosome number 4 uh, and uh, the inflorescence the plant height and nextly the color of the unripe pod chromosome number 5 and sheet shape on chromosome number 7 these questions have actually been asked in your old question papers you can turn out the papers and see next ideal shelling percentage so just uh, you know if you have big generally whatever we grow are not full po edible pods like if what are fully edible pods means even the shell you can eat some uh, some of the varieties are complete like whole pod is edible they are generally even more sweeter compared to the other pods so general shelling percentage that is after you remove how much do you gain after you remove the shell that is at least you should have 35 to 45 this is an ideal shelling percentage and what uh, the trypsin inhibitors which are the toxic uh, compounds the are unfavorable compounds that are present in peas and beans even the whole family itself you can mention it it is trypsin inhibitors and the irrigation requirement being 15 to 20 cm so if it is 15 to 20 cm it is a deep rooted or shallow rooted which type of crop it is i would like to listen from the students itself and nextly prolonged application of dap will cause sulfur deficiency this is also important bit which is covered in uh, many exams so uh, sulfur deficiency has been observed with the prolonged uh, application of dap at lower temperature this increase in sugar content in peas is observed so what happens when the temperature raises uh, there is an increased accumulation of starch under low temperatures we see that there, there is an increased accumulation of sugars so uh, why do these at high temperatures these sugars actually get converted into starch and hemicellulose because of which at high temperatures the pods are very uh, rigid in uh, to touch to eat even and also this because of the higher starch content in it nextly uh, we have some of the important uh, uh, varieties that, that is arka chaitra arka uttam arka tapas you cannot see the tapas and mayur in most of the books you will see this uh, uttam and uh, priya and kind of things but uh, some others like this uh, tapas mayur and uh, pramod pramod also you might have been seeing in some books uh, are like i thought like they'll be new for you so arka chaitra arka uttam arka tapas arka mayur arka pramod and arka priya whereas arka sampurna is a whole pod edible pea that is you can even eat the shell which is very uh, sweet in taste and tender also arka karthik arka ajit are powdery mildew as well as rust resistant so here we have seen that both are actually negatively correlated or have linkage but here we see arka karthik and arka ajit having both powdery mildew and rust resistance why i am repeating again and again is like once you complete the once i complete the ppt these at least these points should get uh, stamped into your brains next is uh, generally we know that uh, leguminous crops are nitrogen fixing crops and uh, seed treatment of all the legumes is done with rhizobium leguminosarum whereas only for french bean we go for rhizobium fasciolae all other legumes we go for leguminosarum where only for french bean we go for fasciolae uh, after that we have cowpea which is uh, originated from africa with chromosome number 22 Uh, so what was the garden pea chromosome number it was 14 it is the lowest chromosome number bearing legume uh, vigna unguiculata variety sesquipedalis which is also called as yard long bean uh, or asparagus bean which are very long it is almost up to from our finger tips to our knees it is very long uh, cow uh, cowpea like it is a variant or a species of cowpea which is very long and it is variety sesquipedalis the only variety that is prevailing is arka mangla and uh, yard long bean cannot be transported long uh, for long distance why because the name itself says yard long bean they are very long because of which they break there is a chance of breakage and uh, uh, vigna unguiculata variety biflora which is also called as the cat junk bean is resistant to pod borers biflora called as cat junk bean is resistant to pod borer they may directly ask cat junk bean or biflora or one which the species resistant to pod borer any type of question can be framed here nextly vigna unguiculata uh, unguiculata variety mensensis is the progenitor of cowpea what was the progenitor of garden pea you have to just be 
very uh, you have to compare it and you have to remember nextly vigna angulata variety radiata which is the pulse type with the pulse type and uh, the field type uh, the garden type we have even garden we we have pulse type and the uh, field type and the garden type right here also the radiata is the pulse type cowpea vigna angulata variety cylindrica is a dual purpose variety that is you can use it as vegetable also you can use it as a pulse also cylindrica photo insensitivity is dominant to sensitivity which is actually a good character generally we see cowpea is not uh, so very uh, you know uh, they, there is no much of work done in cowpea because there are no many constraints see, we here we see it is a favorable character where cow uh, photo insensitivity is dominant over sensitivity the insensitivity is like even under short day or long day conditions whatever the photo period is whatever the sunshine rate is it performs the same so it is a good character that it is insensitive and it is a dominant character we need not be very much worried about it nextly the trypsin inhibitor which is generally present in all the pea legumes uh, uh, are actually used as and repellent for as used for the resistance in tomato for coleoptera and lepidopteran pests so trypsin inhibitor of cowpea is used against coleoptera and lepidopteran resistance in tomato uh, what genetic male sterility observed in which legume crop that is cowpea so genetic male sterility is observed in cowpea whereas the seed rate in summer is 25 kg and in rainy 10 to 15 kg so why is this generally you see the summer seed rate will be higher than rainy season why does it happen because in the summer as the temperatures will be very high to induce a microclimate condition we go for a close spacing so that uh, there is no uh, uh, more desiccation of the water there is no much evaporation of the water so the spacing we have give less so that the plants are near by each other microclimate stabilization is that point and nextly uh, there is high mortality rate when it comes to summer conditions if water is not pro properly available so also we go for higher seed rate so summer 25 kg per hectare and rainy almost 10 kg less that is 10 to 15 kg kg per hectare so this cowpea is also called as vegetable meat which contains 23% protein and which is nothing but uh, like uh, which is very high in protein content hence it is called as vegetable meat whereas what is boneless meat soya bean is called as the boneless meat uh, some of the uh, important uh, varieties when we come to is pusa palguni which has been introduced from philippines and for summer crop it is a summer crop and pusa barsati as the name itself indicates barsat it is a rainy season crop and pusa do fasli means uh, oh, throughout the year so it, it has to be it is not rainy it is not summer it means it is it is photo insensitive there only we will get a hint that it is a photo insensitive you have some of the options and they ask what is a photo insensitive uh, variety that is pusa do fasli and pusa falguni into philippine selection is the cross for pusa do fasli uh, pusa rituraj uh, pusa komal and pusa sukomal um so what is the which which crop has the variety called arka komal now so in the same family there is also arka komal um, we'll see in the coming up slide so pusa ruturaj pusa komal and pusa sukomal arka suman so which is rust resistant and uh, arka garima arka samruddhi samruddhi is also a variety in again we are going to see in the same family and also in nextly the other bean that is the french bean fasciolus vulgaris generally beans when the term itself bean comes it they refer to a french bean first so which also has the same chromosome number as the cowpea that is 2n equals to 22 with the origin being central america whereas cowpea was of africa so now uh, among the peas here the image is like french bean everybody might have seen so here i have put the image of lima bean so lima beans uh, you can see in the market uh, they directly they sell the packed beans directly but not the shelled beans are directly sold so the scientific name being fasciolus lunatus lunatus you know in exam they even ask lunatus lunatus you know just simple questions they just change the spelling also 
also one has to be very consciously reading it's not i have all lunatas it's not lunata it's lunatas or lunatas also you have to be very clear even in exams people uh, we come across many people writing the spelling wrong they they just read it for rough so it is lunatas lima bean origin being gautimala and it is not so closely related to french bean but yeah it is also a bean so we are covering in beans uh next is faciolus acutifolius variety latifolius which is the tepari bean scientific name and which is highly tolerant to high temperatures and as grows up to a temperature of 35 degrees so they will not ask any other major questions when it comes to uh, the other species only these points are important highly tolerant to high temperature or tepari bean scientific name this is actually enough and next is faciolus polyanthus that is ear bean the common name angularis which is adzuki bean and polystichus is thicket bean and uh, the formula for seed index so when it comes for coal crops we have to remember the formula for the head shape and all and like small small uh, formulas even growing degree days which i have mentioned earlier those formulas are very important uh, they may you know change the different options and give you the say ask for the formula also the seed index formula being seed weight by total pod weight into 100 by overall uh, multiplied by 100 uh, minus seed length Mm. so next uh, why do we use the seed index and all kind of things so there is a uh, appropriate size that is required for exporting and um, mark based on the market demand demands so seed index is also a sign of actually maturity and uh, uh, which also helps us to give the seed fiber analysis also like this much of size okay the fiber content estimation is also made based on the seed index so when it comes to beans it is uh, seed index is a symbol of maturity and also fiber analysis alpha amylase inhibitor of this bean that is french bean is used against coleopterin resistance in genetic engineering so there we were strong, we were talking about the trypsin inhibitor that is uh, used and here we are talking about the alpha amylase inhibitor that is used against coleopterins and that is mostly studied in genetic engineering hema gluten is found in french bean so the compound that is present in french bean is hemagglutin and test weight uh, of 1000 seeds is 250 to 600 grams uh, there is a book called lakshmi lal which is full of objectives almost uh, 4800 objectives will be there the book is very um, you know the letters are actually very bold so the 4000 bits also will be of 300 400 pages actually then that they like every point is a question you can just see i don't know how many of your libraries will be having the book uh, but every point is a question where you, in up to 5 6 pages you will have the test weights only of different crops so we never know the test weight can be asked cannot be asked just just remember as a newspaper reading like thing that is the test weight of 1000 seeds being 250 to 600 grams and the base temperature of french bean is 10 degrees whereas for garden peat was very low and we grow it for at uh, so like cool season crop you know so it is 4.4 when it comes to french bean it is 10 degrees celsius and uh, the para chlorophenoxy acetic acid the pcpa at the rate of 2 ppm is used for increasing the fruit set in the french bean so some growth regulators have crucial role when because it is scientifically proven many papers come up with the same uh, chemical compound so in when it comes to french bean it is the pcpa at the rate of 2 ppm to increase the fruit set and uh, a cross between lima bean and other beans is not possible why does it it is not possible because of the post fertilization embryo abortion means there is a process of, of fertilization poly after pollination there is fertilization even the embryo is formed but after that it gets aborted how why does it happen what are the different post fertilization barriers maybe the endosperm size is not enough because of which the there is no enough food for the embryo and it gets aborted there are different reasons actually Uh, but uh, for the exam point of view like general concept point of view it is very important that everybody knows but in exam point of view we will be running so the cross between lima bean and other beans is actually not successful because of post fertilization barriers and that is of embryo abortion so races of common bean so we have known that uh, french bean has an origin from central america in that again the middle american races and the south american races so uh, we have different races i don't think this is important for you jrf people so okay we'll just leave it and the seed rate for bush and pole type 
between 65 kg per hectare and for pole types being 25 to 30 kg per hectare now uh, like bush types are very uh, bushy in nature you know they are bushy in nature then how can you accommodate 65 kg per hectare whereas pole types which grow a little bit straight you know um, they go a little straight compared to bush type obviously as the name indicates but the seed rate is very low how why come uh, how how come it has happened like that the main reason being bush types are less yielders than the pole types so uh, as the yield uh, you cannot afford the same amount of fertilizer irrigation and other requirements so we increase the seed rate for bush it is 65 kg and for pole types this is 25 to 30 kg as pole type uh, will be very long it will be means every node is fruiting there as the length increases as the branches also length increases we have more yield the pole types are generally high yielders and uh, the very famous pole type is kentucky wonder whereas uh, many bush types uh, even uh, many uh, you can see punt and arka varieties that have come from uh, bush type that are bush type are arka anoop arka arjun arka sharad arka suvidha so suvidha we have seen just before slide uh, next punt samrat uh, sorry pant bean to pant anupama arka komal so pusa komal we have just uh, studied we try to recollect we have covered and pusa parvati very 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 important uh, when it comes to french bean so pusa parvati is an extra mutant of wax pod it is a mutant variety uh, uh, we will be discussing the mutants as a different chapter itself there they will come with uh, all the mutants in different crops so that you can just remember Uh, as of all mutants at one place like somebody asks you and you can just come up with the answer like that so pusa parvati is a mutant which is a x-ray mutant of wax pod so nextly uh, stringless and stringed we know stringless uh, obviously the the drive why stringless are more advantages than uh, stringed beans means obviously the dry weight content if you remove the string or the dry weight comes down so whenever a consumer is taking 1 kg of uh, beans or uh, uh, even 100 grams 150 grams get, gets wasted in just this string so we don't want such kind of things right and also it is a cumbersome job we want everything to be very easy stringless varieties uh, premium and jane stringless from sweden and uh, contender bountiful from usa they are also very famous bush type varieties nextly the runner bean the only uh, cross pollinated legume crop that is of the family uh, all the legumes that we eat the only cross pollinated legume is runner bean or scarlet runner bean so scientific name being fasciolus fasciolus coccineus so it is also a long day plant generally other legume crops are uh, i want the answer so gamma has utility in cow that is gms and this is the gametophytic self incompatibility incompatibility is different from self incompatibility different from male sexuality how you have to most of them being perennial also we do cultivate them as annual only So only cross pollinated cross pollinated legume crop. This is the only major crop uh, point that is actually co- leaving these three f- crops. Like they may ask uh, the scientific name, cross pollinated, long day, short day. This G uh, self incompatibility. You will not get any other question from the scarlet runner bean. That is that. And nextly, the cluster bean, the Cyanopsis tetragonal loba, having f- chromosome number two n equals to fourteen, which is the chromosome number of uh, the garden pea which is having the origin of africa which is the origin of cowpea so the cyanopsis tetragonaloba the gore gum is extracted from the cluster bean which has immense commercial value the gum which is used as a thickener in ice cream uh, and stabilizer in beers adhesive and in medicines also the base material for the medicine covering and all also it is used the uh, cyanopsis senegalensis is the progenitor 
and cluster bean is also reported to show up to 2% of cross pollination when it shows 2% cross pollination then why it is not considered as a cross pollinated crop because 0 to 5% uh, cross pollination are considered to be self pollinated 5 to 12% are considered as often cross pollinated and when the crop shows more than 12% of pollination then it called it is called as a cross pollinated crop so but there is are there are reports that cluster bean shows 2% cross pollination that we are reading but it is a self pollinated crop only uh, whereas when it comes to scarlet runner bean the percentage is high so it is mentioned as uh, only cross pollinated legume crop uh, nextly the endosperm is used in textiles as of i have mentioned by nothing but the gorgum uh, and the compound that is found in the seeds of cluster bean is galactomannan galactomannan nextly dolichus bean dolichus lablab so only these points these five six points you know which i was that's why i was telling that legume crops are very easy number of crops made by there in the leguminous family but it is very easy to read because there are only like if a crop is there there are limited number of points that you have to know about them uh, in general you, you have to know the crop that's that's not the matter but in exam point of view you have very minimal to read it from that nextly dolichus bean uh, dolichus leblet where you can see the origin being india um, and the chromosome numbers are uh, ranging from 20 22 24 so dolichus leblet variety typicus being the garden or the vegetable type and lignosus being the field or the pulse type we have also seen the radiata in cowpea which was pulse type here we are seeing lignosus because the lignin content is high that is it is rigid so rigid once it is hard you can remember like that okay that's why we keep it in store that is a pulse type you can just remember like that and photo sensitivity is dominant to insensitivity in cowpea it was reverse photo insensitivity was uh, dominant to sensitivity which was a favorable character but now, which the, whereas Dalika is being all the commercial crops, what are important for us, they will have all bad characters. And we have to, you know, we have to go for the domestication, different beans that are favorable, we have to incorporate. That is the major breeding objectives that we read. So here again, the same problem has come. That is nothing but the photosensitivity being dominant to insensitivity. The pole type Dolikas are photosensitive in nature, but we know pole types are heavy yielders. And again, the problem comes in this only. That is, pole types are photosensitive. Why I'm repeating like this? This is favorable. This is having this uh, undesirable things. Is you have to remember them easily. So photosensitivity dominant to insensitivity, and pole type Dolikas having more photo sensitivity so all the bad characters that in in what we want uh, the important uh, pole type varieties being the arka adarsh arka krishna arka pradhan arka vistar uh, arka prasiddhi arka swaghat arka bhavani whereas uh, others being the arka sambram arka so arka sambram very important like lot of people like like lot of exams you have this point like arka sambram being asked arka saumya arka jay and arka vijay very books you see arka jay and vijay nextly the winged bean so the winged bean as the name itself says it has uh, uh, you can see the uh, image that there are some wingy structures on the pods you can see all the four or five serrated wingy structures so it is called winged bean and it called scent veg vegetable or one species supermarket because every part every part of the plant is edible it is flower it is fruit it is root whatever it is it is edible so one species supermarket that is soya's rival because soya is a very you know zero fat zero carbohydrates high in protein so it is also called a that is also called as soya's rival and uh, the origin being madagascar uh, the origin being madagascar for it and uh, i have mentioned that all parts are edible uh, oil is rich in unsaturated fatty acids so what is good for health saturated fatty acids or unsaturated so unsa generally vegetable oils that is we call the dalda and all are rich in they are saturated fatty acids which is actually not good for health uh, but this uh, winged bean oil is rich in unsaturated fatty acids which is good for health and the protein content we have seen that uh, the protein content of french bean being uh, 23 percent 
here we see it is dry seed having 30 to 40 percent protein and 15 to 20 percent oil when i went for the ira interview for the first time they asked me which is the leguminous crop having the highest amount of protein so what should be the answer the answer should be french bean and uh, then you cannot say it's dry seed of uh, legume uh, that is winged bean and all so in major crops only you have to answer and uh, uh, it was it was like french bean when it comes to different uh, leguminous crop if anybody asks you and in general if in winged bean the question is being in particular asked then the dry seed having 30 to 40 percent and uh, 15 to 20 percent of oil in it the tuber enlargement because as this legume crop has tubers which is edible the temperature degrees of night uh, the tuber also contains a pro high amount of protein that is 11 to 15 percent you don't find this much of protein in other tuber crops but you are finding in it that is 11 to 15 percent and uh, whereas for the flowering and pot development 25 to 35 degrees the ui natural draft mutant has been identified in it uh, of Nextly, uh, the palmetotorum, that is edible pods uh, of uh, 2n equals to 20, sorry, that is not 20, 20. Uh, 2n equals to 20 is the uh, chromosome number. And nextly, the stylobium derangianum is a velvet bean, scientific name. Only scientific name is like minor minor crops. Uh, nextly, the broad bean, Vishya faba, 2n equals to 12, South America. Here you can see the chromosome number 12, which is... Uh, less than the uh, garden bee and cluster bean because both garden bee and cluster bean have a chromosome number of 14 where Vishya Faba broad bean has a chromosome number of 12 and the origin being South America. Central America was the origin for French bean. Next is primary center being the Mediterranean region and the secondary center of origin being as Af uh, Afghanistan and Ethiopia. I hope because you are JRF people, you know that why, how, what is primary center of origin, secondary center of origin, how a center of origin is actually uh, determined for a crop. Mm -hmm. So where you have the maximum genetic diversity, uh, why do you have that genetic diversity there? Because of the uh, survival of the fittest even under adverse conditions it is able to survive there it is being uh, able to cope up with the pests and diseases there means it is because it has been uh, it has been originated there so it has that essence of it so uh, um, how many centers of origin are there? Who gave the classification? All this is also important. Uh, these all don't come when you read horticulture as vegetables, fruits, flowers. So it is not like that. In an overall context, you have to read. Uh, we'll try if we can cover the general aspects also. I'll be happy if, if the time permits and we can do it. Uh, often cross-pollinated legume with 20 to 40% cross-pollination that is observed. Here we can see the ranges crossing uh, 20 to 20 uh, percent that is 20 to 40 percent cross pollination is observed and seeds contain anti-nutrients that is tannins vicin and covicin very important vicin and covicin tannins no vicin so why because they cause uh, the uh, problem called hemolytic anemia not only in children even in adults it is observed the hemolytic anemia if you consume unboiled raw uh, broad beans you get uh, favism a disorder which is the redness of your face and uh, all uh, that favism occurs due to the presence of the compounds anti-nutritional compounds called vicin and covicin and largest germplasm collection is observed uh, it's uh, present in syria if, uh, and next week the swart bean scientific name being uh, canavalia gladiata uh, progenitor of swart bean being uh, canavalia gladioleta which is also very important uh, the progenitor nextly nc formis the jack bean only scientific names this jack bean scientific name was asked me for me in one exam also uh, only scientific names are enough for these crops the swart bean uh, canavalia gladiata gladioleta being the progenitor of swart bean nc forma jack bean and stocksai endemic to deccan Pen peninsular region if you have come for the demo class you must be knowing what is endemic the next is plagos perma that is botani bean this this botani bean scientific name is also asked and what is the harmful compound or anti-nutritional compound that is present in spot beans is uh, that is cyanide that is hcn uh, so what is that is uh, anti-nutritional compound present in broad bean that is uh, causing fabism that is the and covicin.
for swart bean that is hcn so for swart bean uh, i generally other crops you will find anywhere uh, but uh, for minor crops you might not find so uh, the cannavalia gladiata scientific name being 20 is a uh, chromosome number being 22 and uh, 44 even polyploids are observed in uh many polyploids are observed in swart bean uh the ancestor being uh, cannavalia virosa this question is also important virosa has been asked in other species i have already mentioned the gladiata ensiformis uh nextly it is perennial in nature all almost all the legumes uh, are perennial with uh, which are cultivated to be annuals but swart bean in specific is perennial uh, in nature where we can uh i have also mentioned about the sapotoxin that is nothing but hcn and the seeds are large with its uh, you know the helium region if you if you remember the structure of a seed 2.5 to 3.5 cm you can see uh, so big it is so big in size 2.5 to 3.5 the seed itself is that much size um here you can see the image where it is a perennial climber we can pots uh they mentioned these points but uh, now if we have time we will see the we will see the, the what do you call this i'm sorry the breeding aspects yeah the breeding aspect of uh, peas and beans so i i'll just complete this in 10 minutes so i'll not take more time in breeding because it might not be important to you the same points will be covered here um so what are the breeding objectives uh, generally this question is also breeding objectives is very uh, underestimated or underrated point when it comes to uh, many vegetables but it is not like that you have to be very important for high shelling percent uh, higher resistance to abiotic biotic diseases everybody writes but the most important point here is high shelling percent um, when it comes to the structure it is highly self pollinated crops all those all the leguminous crops are generally self pollinated crops where the flower contains five sepals five petals one standard keel because of which we have the self pollination to be a mandatory factor two wings uh, so the keel petal is the major factor just just to brush up your basics Thank you, students, for your patient hearing. Thank If you, you for general hearing. reading aspects, but uh, we will have in the next time because my internet is also not supporting right now. Yeah, any other doubts? These important points, if you cover for that, like exam point of view and JRF point of view, I think that will be enough. Uh, in depth for many other crops also, we will go slowly. But uh, so that number of times we can cover the crops, so that you guys can remember it easily. Mm, hope you have noted the points. Uh, the other breeding PPT I can even share, or we can we can also discuss if the class permit at the end. Uh, not today, but any other day. Yeah. Any doubts?
You can unmute yourself, students, if you have any doubt and ask. Um, if you if you guys have any doubts and you don't want to ask here, you can privately message me. I my I'm also in the WhatsApp group. Uh, and if you want any, you, if you have any suggestions for me, like uh, what are the other aspects that I have to cover or which you feel like it is difficult or uh, this might have been included can also be, are also welcome. So you can even uh, get me on uh, WhatsApp if, if you're having trouble and speaking like this. Yeah, you will get all the notes, uh, whatever, uh, uh, like uh, whatever notes, like, like whatever class I'm taking, even the demo class, the initial one also have shared uh, through through the ACA uh, main, I think uh, I don't know how it comes to you, but I'll just ask and confirm. All the material I'll share. It will come, students. Don't worry. It will come to you definitely very soon. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, students. We attend even class and uh, follow the class regularly and uh, uh, go through your notes, whatever you have made, and read about it. So try to finish the content whichever day, whatever, whatever it taught, that will help you to uh, be online. Okay, that's it for today's class. I'm ending the class now. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, students.